I'm Ross Rosenberg, as many of you know, but just in case there's a few of you out there who've never heard of me or just started to hear of me. Let me just give you a bit of background. I am um, I'm a 57 year old guy who um, wrote a few books, um, two of which are called The Human Magnet Syndrome. Um, the older one, which is why we love people who hurt us, and the newer one, The Codependent Narcissist Trap. Um, those books have been translated into four languages, and we're working on Russian and uh, Korean. Um, I'm a psychotherapist. I work at Clinical Care Consultants in Inverness, Illinois, and I'm a professional trainer, an expert witness, and, and a couple other things. Um, but I am super passionate, incredibly focused on the work that I have been creating on the recovery from self-love deficit disorder, what most people used to call codependency, and the, um, the creation of its cure, self-love abundance. The reasons why we fall in love with the same people over and over again who end up hurting us, the pathological narcissist. But you guys probably notice that I'm a little bit different from um, the other people on YouTube. Uh, first, I'm not really big on blaming. You know, yes, narcissists are bleep, bad word, people. Um, they hurt us. They don't have remorse. They don't have empathy. They try to destroy us. But there are hundreds, maybe a thousand YouTube video channels that are going to talk all about narcissism and how bad they are and how you should, you know, try to outsmart them, beat them up, do whatever. I don't, I don't, I don't subscribe to that way of thinking. We have to take responsibility for ourselves. We as adults, we got ourselves into this mess by the choices that we made in our relationships. Yes, we can blame our parents. And certainly, you know, if you've been following me, that SLDD is a problem from our childhood, attachment, uh, attachment trauma. But we're not going to get better. We're simply not going to change if we try to blame someone else and we play the victim card. Now, I am not suggesting that SLDs are responsible for being hurt. I'm not suggesting that if you are gaslit, it's your fault. I'm not suggesting that if you are psychologically or phys physically beat up, it's your fault. But I am suggesting that there were times in, in the course of that relationship, you had a chance to say no. You had a chance to say, this doesn't feel right. You had a chance to set a boundary, and after the boundary was violated, you had a chance to walk away. But you did it. I did it. You did it. It's just, it's just the facts of this disorder. So in my work, not only do I hold the SLDs, the codependents, responsible, but I try to address the shame, the loneliness, and the addiction that is underneath this disorder that compels them to fall in love with the same broken person who seems so much like their soulmate, but invariably, predictably, becomes their soulmate. And how do we solve this? Well, damn, we don't solve it by blaming anyone. Um, we solve it by looking deep into ourselves and, and asking the questions, why? Why do I keep making the same mistake? Despite all of the consequences, despite all the people I've hurt, my children, my friends, myself. And once you understand that this is a real disorder that is born out of trauma of being hurt by our own parents during a time where we were supposed to learn about love and attachment, and, and feel important and lovable. And we finally um, come to terms with the fact that not only did our parents fail us, but they, they created this, the dysfunctional foundation that would ultimately lead us into wanting to replicate the same misery, the same trauma in our childhood. 
And that is the insanity of this problem we're dealing with. It's the insanity. We know this is bad for us, but yet we say yes when we want to say no. We say stay when we, we want them to leave. And then making things more complicated, some of us, some of the more un unfortunate SLDs, they choose pathological narcissists who gaslight them. So you take this thinking, this mental, um, uh, this mental um, dysfunction that is already not right, and then someone exploits it and they turn our mind against itself. They create the identity for us that we mistake was our own. And the horrors of gaslighting is something that many of you probably know that I have been talking about quite a lot in, in my recent videos. So 2018 for many of us sucked. It sucked for me and it was my awakening point. But I came to understand on my 57th birthday, March of 2018, that I wasn't nearly as far along in the self-love recovery road than I needed to be. And I made some really hard decisions and they have rocked my life. And my decision was, and it's kind of a secret, so I hope you don't tell anyone because this is confidential, right? I hope so. I made a decision that I wanted to get further in self-love recovery. The man who created the concepts about self-love deficit disorder, self-love recovery, he realized that there were parts of his life he was still in denial about. And that's the bad news. The good news is, the good news is I woke up and I said, I am 57 years old and I have yet to get to what I call my stage 10, which is the codependency, uh, codependency cure. For many people who've been following me, I have a 10 stage treatment pr program called the 10 stage self-love recovery program, which um, is available with a lot of my full length videos at selfloverecovery.com. I created this, this theory, this 10 stage theory, and I was still on stage eight. I said, I'm gonna have to delete that. I said, shoot, <laughs> um, I, need to, I need to make some changes. And I tell you that because this is a new year. Last year happened. This year is going to happen. Self-love recovery, the codependency cure is all about getting what we should have gotten if our parents weren't so effed up. We should have felt good about ourselves. We should have not had any shame. We should not have struggled with loneliness. We should not have had this addictive compulsion to find someone to make us not feel bad about ourselves. But we can change that. We can change it. Not only do I know it at the core of myself, I feel it in my bones, but I know it because I've been in this field 30 years and I have been one layer, one step at a time. I've been putting together these set of ideas that have culminated in my human magnet syndrome work and my codependency cure work. This is real. This is serious stuff. Life is short. I'm 57, I did the math. If, I, if, if nothing bad happens to me, I have 15, maybe 20 good years, and I'd be pretty happy to have 20 good years. But why not experience for the first time the joy, the freedom of self-love abundance? Why not? Well, because if we're an SLD, our brains, our minds, our personalities have been um, programmed for us to sabotage ourselves so we can let someone in who can take control and like a vampire is to his victims, like a leech is to um, the person to, uh, to whom he's gonna extract their blood, they're gonna live off of us. 
2019 is our year. Are you with me? 2019 is the year of self-love abundance. You can do this not because I am like so connected to this idea and trying to convince you, but because you deserve it. It's never too late to be the person you should have been. That's a quote from George Eliot. It's not, you had every opportunity to be happy, but you were born to parents that were broken. As I, as I explained in chapter one in my new, my new book, you can continue this relay race and you can be the next generation that hands off that codependency, self-love deficit disorder baton. Worse off, you can hand off the narcissist baton. Because when we, get, when we have children, there's only two choices. Those children are gonna become SLDs or they're gonna become pathological narcissists. And you all know this is true. If you're an SLD and your children are older, we can change. Whether our children are toddlers or they're 40, they still need us to light the path up in front of them. They need us to show them the way. Now, it is true that you might have an SLD kid who is in a relationship with a narcissist, and he won't have anything to do with your, this BS human magnet center and Ross Rosenberg propaganda. He will turn it off, tune it out, and say, leave me alone. But I promise you, he'll be watching you out of the corner of his eye, or he'll be watching you and not even know it. Because there will be hit time. He or she will hit bottom. And he will remember what you said. She will remember. You cannot live in shame. You cannot live in regret. Everything that we did happened to us. I have been married way too many times. And I cannot express the shame that I carry about that. But the shame it feeds on itself. So before I move on to the next part of, of this discussion, I wanted you, you to hear me say, this is 2019. It's our year. It might not be the perfect year. We might not solve or cure our SLDD or codependency, but we can start. And how do we start? Is we believe we deserve it. You can't you can't get to something you don't see. You cannot become something you don't understand. You have to visualize what self-love abundance is, what this codependency cure is. You have to imagine it. You have to like focus it, focus it in your mind's eye and, and, and fill it in with details, pixelate it, fill it in with colors and, and borders and and and, and make as many details as you can about what does this self-love abundant self look like? Because if you can imagine it, you can make it happen. And if you follow my work, you know, in stage five, stage six, stage seven, that's all tough stuff. So that is my 2019 welcoming the new year message. Um, many of you guys, um, have been following my videos. And I wanna explain something that I think you guys might find interesting. My videos are connected to my own recovery. Uh, if you could see the graph that I see sometimes, and I become obsessed with YouTube data, um, and it shows how many views I get. March of last year, remember I told you March of last year, I decided I needed to change everything, and I made some really, really difficult um, decisions that have rocked my world since. If you look at my YouTube data, um, the views that I had from March to June were about 6,000 views a day. Um, the views that I get now are about 19 to 20,000 a day. And I'm not saying this to brag. I am saying that my self-love recovery, my commitment to go deeper um, into my pain, get to the next level, the, the next uh, uh, page, the next chapter in my life that I thought um, 
wasn't yet um, written. Um, the more that I have dug deeper into my life with the intention of uh, becoming healthier and uh, more healed and more um, self-love abundant, the more I see about narcissism, self-love deficit disorder, gaslighting, all of these ideas come into my head. They're, it's populated. Um, and I share that with you is that so that you know that our recovery, because you're not different than me, your recovery, my recovery connects to our creativity, our ability to do something with our life, our ability to make ourselves feel better, to create things that we're proud of, whether it's a good day's worth of work, it's um, you mowed the lawn and it's the best lawn you ever mowed. You wrote a book, you wrote an article, you did a video. When we are tuned into ourselves and we make a commitment to heal, we access parts of ourselves that we didn't know. And the videos that I'm putting out now are connected to my own recovery. Some of you are my clients and you're watching this, you're watching this. And you know, <laughs> you know that every so often we'll have this like, not every so often we'll have this great session. <laughs> I didn't mean that. Every so often we'll have this, this discussion and this, I, I will have this profound idea that I never thought about. It'll come to my mind and we will talk about it and we'll have this great session. And then I'll say, oh my gosh, that is a new idea. I need to get that out. And so I, you know, an hour later, sometimes a day later, I pick up, you know, the video camera and I, and I crank out another YouTube video. The point is, when we commit ourselves to self-love recovery, we deal with the self-love deficit disorder. We deal with the shame, the loneliness, the addiction. We discover parts of ourselves that we didn't know. We discover things that we didn't know about ourselves, and in my case, about other people. You're no different than me. And the healthier I get, I believe the more content I'm going to, um, uh, the more discoveries I'm going to come to. So keep following my YouTube channel and be a part of this, uh, this evolution, this part of this becoming, because I could not be more happy that I have it to share with you. I want to talk a little bit about gaslighting. Um, uh, what I've been doing with gaslighting is equal to what I've been doing with codependency. Um, I've been understanding that it's a phenomenon that is deeper, um, more profoundly um, dangerous and pathologically um, slippery than anyone ever knew. So I don't regurgitate the same things that you, you, you hear over and over again that people talk about. Um, I try to create new and improved ways to understand. And if you read my book, come to my lectures, watch my YouTube videos, you'll understand that gaslighting is deeply intertwined with narcissistic abuse and SLBD. And I will be talking about that um, in the retreat. I will be talking about that at Cripolo on March 29th. I talk about that in my um, full-length um, video on selfloverecovery.com. I believe it's a four-hour video. And I talk about it in bits and pieces um, on YouTube. But it's really important stuff because if we are going to solve the self-love recovery problem, excuse me, the self-love deficit disorder problem, we have to realize what part of our minds were stolen from us. We have to realize what part of our narratives, our self stories were never ours. We have to realize that someone took a mirror that once reflected our beautiful, perfect selves. And what they did was they pasted a picture of the broken person they wanted us to see. And we didn't know that. And we've been looking at that mirror and we've identified with that picture that someone wanted us to see. And we need to peel that baby off and find out who we really are, even if we're broken and hurting. And you'll be hearing more about gaslighting. So that is 
what I wanted to talk to you guys about. Now I'm going to try to answer some questions. You know, so to um, Karen, how do you get rid of the label of being crazy? Um, if you've been gaslit um, and and your um, partner, your lover, or your friend, your parent has um, um, insisted that not only you are crazy, but have proven to you that you are. So to the question, how do you get rid of that label? Is you have to understand that the label is not yours. It's not you. It's a, it's, it was stuck on top of what you really are. And you have to understand, you might not know who you really are, but at first you need to know it's not you. The very beginning of solving gaslighting is to know that the person that you believe you are, that you have been gaslit and you've been inculcated to believe you are, does not exist. It's not true. It's all lies based upon lies. And that's the starting point. Okay, next question. It, uh, does it get harder the older we get to find a right partner? No, and yes. <laughs> Um, statistically speaking, if you're in your 20s, everyone's single, and there's a higher probability that you're going to have tons of opportunities and choices. But the older we get, the more challenging it gets. But don't worry about that. I promise you, the probability of getting the partner that you deserve is based upon your own self-love. If you love yourself, if you solve your self-love deficit disorder, you solve your codependency, um, the healthy people want a piece of it. And the unhealthy people are nervous and afraid. That's a human magnet syndrome. You de develop what I call the narsometer, which is the internal alarm mechanism that, um, that lets you know when narcissists are in your life and that you should um, avoid. But when you start to like have good self-esteem and you start to feel happy and secure, these healthy people come your way. And let's say they don't. Let's just imagine that there's just not a lot of healthy people. But you got yourself. You got happiness not based upon what someone can do for you. And that's the beauty of self-love recovery is that you have to fall in love with yourself. And then someone, and this is my stage nine, it's when self-love abundant people fall in love with self-love abundant people. So yes, it is harder the older we get, but it's, in, it's impossible to find love if we're an SLD and, and we're looking for a healthy love. Next question. Okay, guys, you guys are having it. You know, you guys are having a great conversation. I'm, I'm really happy about that. Um, all right, come back, come back over here. Come here. Ask me a question. You're welcome, Michelle. Can we apply our program to an entire country ruled by a person? Um, yes, um, narcissists are everywhere. Gaslighting is everywhere. Gaslighting is a sociological um, issue. It's a um, psychological issue. It's a political issue. Um, it's, um, and we, um, we can apply many of my, my principles and information um, to larger um, uh, systems. But we don't worry about the world. I think Gandhi said it. We have to be the, the person. We have to be what we want to see in the world. Now, I probably messed that up. But what I mean by that is, or what I believe Gandhi means by that, meant by that, is that um, we can't change the world, but we can change ourselves in the world. And if enough people do that, the world changes with it. And let's say the world doesn't, at least our experience in our own little niche of the world does. And, it, and that's your life. Can you please give tips on how to break the Tom of Braun with the next partner? Um, GM, 
I can't answer questions like that because that's like what I would discuss in about five to 10 full length, 45 minute psychotherapy sessions. Um, so my tip is, is to understand um, your connection to your a trauma bonded partner is because of your SLDD and you need to find a way to talk to a professional about your trauma, your childhood trauma, and make the connections between your childhood and your adult choices and heal those. Because you can't bond with another partner if you don't have the trauma. So we solve the trauma and the trauma bonding in itself um, um, takes, care of its, takes care of itself. Uh, Michelle, you still feel bad for your narcissist. Um, well, that means you're an SLD. Um, because if you feel bad for the person that hurts you, that manipulates you, that um, humiliates you, that cheats you, that cheats on you, that means you love him a lot more than yourself. Because if you experience self-love abundance and someone hurts you, you don't have this compulsion to be nice to them. <laughs> um, if they're your children or your best friend, you know, we have empathy, we have patience, we have tolerance. But if you're nice to someone that's hurting you, the problem is not them, it's you and your fear of being outside of that relationship. And that's what you got to work on. Um, Natalia, how to deal with the smirk campaign at work? Um, again, a complicated question that I can't really answer. Um, but again, it goes back to how I've answered these other complicated questions. The only thing that you can solve is your own lack of happiness, your own lack of fulfillment, your own lack of self-love. Because if you are in a company um, and where there's a smear campaign to hurt you, you might not be able to change that, but you might be able to get a new job. You might be able to um, observe and not absorb that you might be able to um, be the type of person that no longer interests um, the narcissist who uh, seek the weak, feeble prey to pick on. Your best bet is to work on yourself, build yourself, become more resilient, and be less interesting to the narcissist while you extricate yourself out of relationships and possibly where you work. I'm gonna take a few more questions. How do I not be nice to my mother? <laughs> Carrie, I have no idea. But maybe it's you can stop talking to her. You should find out in your own psychotherapy, why are you nice to someone that hurts you? It's because you have been gaslit to believe that that's what a good child does to their parent. You have been inculcated with values and morals and norms that make you believe that you should tolerate someone hurting you when you should actually stop them, set boundaries, and exclude them from your life. The hardest part, Carrie, which is the, the bane of all SLDs working with me, is to know, and this goes with my latest video on becoming a psychological orphan, that when you start setting boundaries to the narcissists in your family, you're going to lose those relationships. So you have to ask yourself a question. In what life would you be happier to be ridiculed, marginalized, hurt, abused, neglected, and have a family, or to finally discover self-love and the peace and, and wonder of it in the not? And that's the psychological orphan that I talk about in my video. Um, last question and see what that is. Kathleen, how do I convince my son he's in a relationship with a narcissist? Oh, that's such a um, common question. You cannot. Um, all you can do is, is be a role model. If you are an SLD and you have not yet fully experienced um, treatment for it and the benefits of what happens when you um, transform self-love deficit disorder, codependency, to self-love abundance. Um, that's what you have to do. 
all your questions go back to that same answer. We have to just, for the sake of ourselves, find self-love. Your son will need to hit bottom. And when he hits bottom, he will have been paying attention to you. And that is when they'll go, hey, mom, hey, dad, uh, you know that, that narcissist stuff you're talking about, that book? Can I borrow that from you? Or, or what is that video you were talking about? You know, that's where um, spirituality, religion, hope, trust, um, that's all we have sometimes is we just, we say the right thing once or twice. We hope that they'll listen. We hope that the seeds are planted. But the most important and bar none, the most important thing we can do to get our children from not being in a relationship with a narcissist is we have to solve the problems in ourselves because we have to give them a beacon of light um, which they can use um, when they're ready. So I want to say, you guys rock. I am nothing without people like you, and I'm forever grateful. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. If you'd like to support um, my work, um, please consider um, the weekend retreat in March and in June. The dates are in selfloverecovery.com. We have um, three openings for June, and we have five, excuse me, three openings left in March and five in June. Um, it's kind of cool. We always get two or three people uh, from other countries. People come all over. We had, uh, we, we had um, someone uh, from um, Australia, uh, Sweden, and England in our last um, retreat. So it's wonderful to see people come together and experience the same healing energy. And also please consider, please consider com coming to see me at Kripalu, um, the um, famous yoga and, and personal development um, um, company in Stockbridge, Massachusetts. Um, it's a three day seminar that I'm giving in this beautiful relaxing resort um, on the codependency cure the human magnet syndrome and gaslighting. Um, any information about any of those two, please contact Carolina Guzman at, at help at selfloverecovery.com. So I want to close on where I began. 2019 is yours. Yesterday happened. Now is when you can start self-love. And it doesn't begin in one grand awakening where your world is rocked. It, become, it starts with just the belief it's possible. And you just put one step in front of the other, one day at a time. I love you guys. You inspire me. And thank you for bringing me into your lives.